Hi, my name is Videm Tulafei. I play guitar for the Swiss dark rock band Danito Alma and in the band I'm also responsible for our light show. So when we decided to have a light show, I spent a few months trying different solutions and QLC Plus was the one that I found that met our needs. So the QLC Plus is free and it has the timeline where you can program pretty much like a DAW. Here I'm going to show how I organize our project and give you some advice that I hope could be useful for you. If you are not familiar with the basic concepts, what I would suggest is that first you watch the introductory videos, you can find the link for them in the description. Alright, so first um, I want to start giving you an overview of our fixtures, our lights, and how they are set on stage, and then we come back to the software. That's the backstage in Munich, and here I'm using the laser bar with strobe, Shed's moving washer and the Camille Parlet for the banner, and two Shed washers on the top. On both sides of the drum, I'm using the Varitech Hero Spot wash, and two small strobes on each side of the drum kit. On the front of the stage, we have three ADJ Jet Fury, and on the other side of the stage, the same fixtures like the laser moving head washer, haze machine, top washers. You can see that some fixtures get the DMX signal by wireless and others by wire. And I use the Showtech interface connected to the PC via ArtNet and the transmitter plugged on the output of the first universe. And all that is controlled by the QLC Plus on this PC. The mid signal is sent by the iPad by the multi tracker app, which also plays our backing track. And that's how our show is all connected. So let's open the project. And here, that's the timeline, the shows tab. Uh, this is where I program all the light changes for all of our songs. Each track you see here, it's a fixture or sometimes just an effect. In my case, it's a combination of fixture doing something specific. I would like to start now with something a bit more basic. Uh, so opening the functions tab, let's have a look in the scenes and how I organize them. So a scene is like a snapshot of a fixture or a set of fixtures where you put all the DMX values you want for those fixtures and you save them as a scene. And that scene can be reused multiple times across your project. So it's a very powerful thing in the sense that if you need to change a particular scene and this scene is being used in multiple tracks, that single change will be reflected everywhere it's being used. So for example, example here in this cameo folder I have some scenes where I configure these uh, park and LED lights that we use for our banners on stage and they are very basic scenes with a few colors so for example if I open the blue scene you can see here that intensity full and blue full and all the other channels are zero and the same for green and so on so here in these scenes you can see that I organize them according to a fixture, sometimes according to a song, if it's something very specific. But normally I organize the scenes per fixtures. The other advantage of using scenes is that if in the future you decide to replace a fixture by a different one, a different brand model, all you have to do is you go to the scene, you add the new fixture into that scene, program it to reflect what the scene is supposed to do, and that change is reflected everywhere in your project where that scene is being referenced. So now let's have a look at the chasers. I normally organize them by song and the advantage of organizing them by song is that you can reuse some parts of the song inside the timeline. So for example, if I have a chorus that repeats three, four times in a song and the chorus has the same length and I want to just have the same light behavior, I can just reuse that chaser. So for example, let's have a look in Skeleton Key song. I have the chaser called Sidewashers Chorus and here on the right you can see all the steps. Now in the Shows tab, if I go to the song, Sidewashers, 
that's the name I give to the truck so I try to keep it consistent and the name of the chasers inside the truck so it makes it easier to find so I can see that this is the chaser I'm using in the chorus and I am reusing it inside the same song so if we move further to the middle of the song you see that I'm using exactly the same sequence again so the advantage is that if you want to change that chaser to add or remove or change you can do whatever you want inside and that change will reflect in the song just going back quickly something that i forgot uh, the other advantage of using scenes and how i use them it's for example for the head movements so these are predetermined spotlight head positions that i have pre-programmed i position them normally on each side of the drum stage and for example here i have one scene that i called x it is when both spotlights are pointing towards the drums but in an angle that it forms like an x if you if you see from far away the same for the other one outwards so it is like a incomplete v i also have some scenes where the spotlights they are pointing towards the band and i also have a scene where the spotlight that you point towards the public and the reason why i have these as predetermined scenes is that when you get to a venue you have to remember that all this light positioning we are talking about geometry and every stage is different it has a different height a different size so i might get to a venue position all the lights and do some small adjustment for example if the stage is too high i might change the angle of the moving head to point towards the public and if the moving heads they are too far apart i can also change a bit the angle to fine tune this x shape for instance if i come here head movement track you see all these scenes that I just mentioned being played in the timeline and any change I make there will be reflected here. Let's have a look now at the shows tab. Uh, as you can see here, I have a list of all the songs that I have already programmed. And here you have the tracks, which will control different TMX channels. Here I have the backing track, which normally is mute because when the song is running in the show i don't really need the backing track to be played but let's see what happens when i create a new show a song that i just added i'm gonna take this name here and create a new one with the same name and here when you create a new show by default the timeline is divided by time as you can see here seconds and milliseconds but I prefer to work in beats per minute because at the end of the day, that's how a song is organized. So you have this option here. I normally I work four by four. And now I have to enter how many beats per minute this song has. I know that this song starts as 116. I'm gonna add the backing track here. So I can just come here and add it. If I put the preview, you can see that they more or less they are aligned. But uh, the problem now is that if I go back to another to a song that is already programmed, even though here it's in bits per minute, when I program the changes, they are all defined by time. So if I click here, you see that all the light changes, they are defined by time not in bits per minute or bits per second so we have to convert bits per minute into time so it will make it easier for us so normally what i do when i'm programming a new song i keep a notepad open with some annotations that are useful for me when i'm programming the lights and here i'm going to put all these conversions so for example if a song is 116 bits per minute i ask myself how many bits are played in a second so if i go here 116 per minute a minute 16 seconds so i divided this by 60 i have 1.9 bits per second now i want to know the duration of only one bit so here is how many bits are played in one second so since a second is a thousand milliseconds i will divide a thousand by this number so i will just copy it 
divided by that number, so I know now that one bit is the equivalent of 517 milliseconds. So I will just copy this here. So the song is bits per minute 116, one bit is equal to 517. So now if I want to find a bar, I multiply this by 4, so I can round this up. So I'm just going to do here one bar. I will just round this. And if I need to go, for instance, half a bit divided by 4 again, now divided by 2, I have half a bit, 258. I can round it to 259 because this is over half. And if I want a quarter note, I divide this by 2 again, so 129. Now that I have this, I can just come back to my song, start adding the tracks and all the changes I can use as a basis these numbers. If, if something lasts, for instance, eight bars, all I have to do is to come here, okay, one bar is 2069 milliseconds times eight. So that change or that light, if it has to last for eight bars, that is equivalent of 16 seconds, 552 milliseconds. So for instance, if I add a track here, let's go here, create a new track. And if I want to create a chaser quickly, let's come here. I will just create here a chaser example. And if I add here a washer, that is in a scene, so for example, I want to add, let's put this blue here, come back here, I'm gonna add that chaser example, and here I can just enter exactly this number, 16552. So I just put single per step, per step, per step, and that is perfectly aligned. To show you another example, if I go here to the song Skin Walker, around the bar 115, I have a really fast change. So there I'm using quarter notes. So this song is also 116. That means that a quarter note should be 129. So if I click here, I see that I have all these changes happening exactly at that speed. So that's how I normally work in the timeline, always in bits per minute. Now talking about how I organize the tracks. First, I try to keep the tracks all with the same name across all the songs and at the same position so that it makes it easier for me to navigate through the songs and to find a track that I needed to change or turn it off. For example, here I have washers, side washers. These are actually the washers that have a moving head. So if I go to another song, they should more or less follow the same. And the other thing that I do, I will never overlap DMX channels. For instance, in this track, I program all channels for the washers and nowhere else in the show, in this song tab, they will appear again in any other track. Doing it that way will avoid a lot of problem, a lot of confusion. In fact, some fixtures, I split them across multiple tracks. So for example, I have the Varitech Hero Spot Wash, which is a fixture that has basically three functions, washers, the spotlight, and head movement. So I split it into three channels. Here I control the washers. In this track, I control the spotlight and everything related to the spotlight, like the color of the spotlight, the focus, and the gobos. And in the third track, I control the head movement. The other advantage of doing it like that, uh, for example, we have a laser bar, 
which has also strobes and uh, different effects. So I could split it into three tracks as well. The advantage of doing that is that if I have the strobe in one track and the laser DMX channels in a different track, I can turn it off when I have to. Sometimes we play in venues that we are not allowed to use the laser, but I still want to use the strobe channels of the same fixture. So if they are split into two different channels, I will keep the strobe running and all I have to do is to come to the laser bar track and turn it off. So doing so, I still can partially use my fixture and turn off only the DMX channels that control the laser. So that's how I normally organize the shows tab. We have now to configure how the song is going to be triggered by the MIDI signal. This is done on the virtual console. I have now to add a new button. And if you double click, I'm going to name this Robbie Zombie. It's a cover. And now the function I have to select my show. So if I go here, I go to the show that I want to trigger when this button is clicked. But I'm not going to click this button manually. What I want to do is to configure a MIDI note that will trigger this song. So if I go to other songs that are already configured, you see that these numbers, they represent a MIDI note. They are all different. So the way that we do it, I have to take the laptop in the practice room. We plug everything, including the MIDI interface. And here, what I do is I click auto detect. Now, what is happening here is this is listening to a MIDI signal. The first MIDI note I get will fill this up automatically. Since I'm not plugged right now, I cannot do it, but this is how we configure the MIDI note. The other thing is if I go, for example, to this song, I chose this one because it's easier to show. I always leave the first bar completely empty. So I have the time to reset all the lights, for example, the moving position and everything else. But this is also important for the MIDI note. For each backing track, we have one bar before the backing track starts. It will send a MIDI note to trigger the show. So all I need per song is only one MIDI note. And then both will run independently. Backing track in the iPad, light show in the laptop. The problem is that there's always some latency between the backing track the time it takes for the MIDI to leave the backing track, go through all the cables and trigger the song. To fix that, I turn the backing track on here so we can listen the click playing in the backing track. And at the same time in the practice room, we can hear the backing track being played and we move the MIDI note back and forth, always triggering and playing and listening until we find the place where when the mid note is played, both backing track and the backing track in the light track both start together. So it's a manual process. We didn't find a better way to do it, but it's a job that you do only once. Sorry for the long video. I hope it was useful for you.